Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, what has your soul told you lately? Are you listening? What have you told it lately? Is it listening? <laughs> What's our relationship like? Who are we? Where do we think? How do we think? What does our soul have to do? think to us about. <laughs> These are very sometimes confusing questions, but to straighten it out, to get a clear look at who we are, where we're going, what life is about, is the author of a wonderful book called Messages from the Divine, Wisdom for the Seeker Soul, Sarah Wiseman. Sarah, welcome to Energy Stew. Oh, thank you, Peter. I'm so happy to be here with you. This is wonderful to talk about these deep issues of life. And that's what your book is about. It really cuts to the quick of how life works in, in relationship to our purpose, our sole purpose, let's call it. Or let's just also say how we don't get it and we should get it. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's really that. Um, your book is loaded with very valuable information about what to expect of life, of, of our soul life. Because that's really all that we really have is our soul life. And we need to follow it somehow in a way that's meaningful. And, and you wrote this book, a lot of it is channeled, some of mm -hmm. it is your own life experience, mm -hmm. and some of it is is great. I, I, you know, I love the part where you talk about living in the Northwest in the rain, and how, you know, Northwesterners are not daunted by being out in the rain. You're not trying to protect yourself with umbrellas and raincoats and all. You just get wet. Yeah, you just go out there. I know a lot of people can't understand that, but I was thinking back in my younger years when I would be running miles and miles and miles, mostly in Central Park, anywhere anywhere else I could find and also, but I just remember so many wet, soggy days that it just felt right to be out there getting wet. <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of a way of communicating with the universe the rain is not, you know, a separate thing. It's just a yet another way that we're in connection to. It's how right. I see it. There's a, a pleasure in being part of the elements. And, mm -hmm. and you talk about it a lot in your book about oneness and to experience oneness. And that's such a, a great metaphor, really, is being out in the rain, is allowing ourselves to be embraced by all of nature, all of life, in the way it communicates, in the way where we feel open, allowing, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we don't always. We're, we're, always, we're trying to protect ourselves. Uh, our egos, uh, they get in the way of our, our soul communication. Mm -hmm. And separate us from the divine <laughs> mm -hmm. and so what yeah it, it, it's like when we go out in the rain and we we let our egos run it you know oh i need the umbrella i need the special jacket maybe for snow maybe we do need those well, there are times it's about being yeah. smart about our health Right. But, but in general, you know, if we just go out and like, oh, this is an experience. This is pretty, I mean, water coming from the sky. That's pretty, pretty, pretty stunning, really, to think that, uh, you know, that we can just go be out in that. And uh, yeah, you're but, right. Yeah. But it's a metaphor people. also. Yes, I agree. And, and there's so many things we can identify with in life uh, to be you know, I, I would call it embraced, but, you know, totally uh, 
in within uh, a um, uh, the greater being of life. Yeah. Well, I grew up in Seattle, which is not, you know, wasn't a very big city at that time. And, and you might even think, <laughs> oh, it's not that busy, but, uh, big. But so when I moved out here to Oregon, um, I really had had no experience of nature living. And it took a long time to have that, uh, allow that openness. I was pretty afraid most of the time of, I was afraid of a tree or I was afraid of a chicken, you know, and, and it took a while to kind of let that part be relaxed and open. It's metaphorically too, yeah. same thing. Right, and that's an interesting learning because again, there's a lot we have to be smart about. Yes. And know, you know, how to live in nature successfully. Mm -hmm. But also, and I think most people are missing how much nature has to give us yeah. in so many ways that we've lost. Yeah. We're, we're, much, we're so electronically tuned that we lose that, the integral part of life where um, everything is one. Right. And, and maybe that's true wherever we are, or even electronically. <laughs> well, I think it is true, but nature helps us um, feel it better. Nature helps us feel it, like it assists us in, in how we experience it. And, and it has a language that we can really yeah. relate to. Yeah. And I, I think going back to Native American uh, teachings, really helps us appreciate uh, how to integrate totally in the world mm -hmm. and honestly in the world and mm -hmm. respect it. Mm -hmm. But your book is so much about respecting ourselves at the deeper level. And, and one thing I kept feeling going through your book is that it's all great as long as you're willing to allow it. And so many people are not, they're not taught to allow it. They're programmed to distract themselves, to, um, to not want to just be. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they have to have, they have to do, they can't just be. And there's so many teachings in your book about direct connection and about, uh, you know, being open. And, and even, you even talk about it. It's not about meditating. It's not even about mindfulness. You know, I really appreciated that. It's not like all these teachings of how to be. It's, it's about being. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I have great respect for people on those paths, but the people that I work with and they, they aren't on those paths and neither am I. It's not our practice. So wait a minute. How do you say that? Look at all this, you know, messages well, from the divine. No, no. What I mean is we're not, we're not formal <laughs> meditative <laughs> right, no, like meditation. Yeah, we might like to be, but it, it doesn't fit our, uh, way, I guess. And uh, so, yeah, it's about showing up to wherever you are and making that your, you just become aware of wherever you are. Being at home well. with self. Yes. And a lot of people don't know how to be at home with self, so we distract ourselves with, mm -hmm. you know, appliances. <laughs> yeah. Devices. Especially Devices, now. right. Devices. Yeah. Cars, planes. Uh, whatever, um, that, um, I, you know, I, it's just uh, gratifying the soul, the ego, and not necessarily the soul, because the ego can never get enough. Yeah. The, the soul Always doesn't wrong. need, the soul is not a measuring uh, instrument. <laughs> well, the soul is complete in every moment there's no time it's not complete whereas the ego is just 
grasping, you know, needing. Uh, but I don't think it's people's fault. I mean, this is how we've been, we've been raised to not allow ourselves to take a, to, to let our soul be the, the leading force. We've been taught that way by our society. So it's taking that paradigm and saying, well, we don't have to do it that way anymore. We can live a different way now. Well, I, I think in one way that's true, that society has taught us. Another way, our souls have allowed society to teach us, and not everybody. So a lot of us have said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And, and so th there are different levels of soul development on this planet right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. Doing all kinds of things that we look askance at and say, wait a minute, this, this isn't what is going to help our souls. Although it, in, in the end it does. I mean, I think everything is in divine order. It's mm -hmm. just that it's not an order that many of us are want to be aligned with. <laughs> It would, I, I think um, one of the parts in the book, it talks about everyone's on their own path and everyone has their own lessons. And this idea of not, uh, not being too concerned if somebody's like, you know, in way behind on the, the soul path, you know, like in, in my mind, if I consider someone just starting it's not important. It, it is divine order. We all are progressing. As right, we what, should. what I'm getting at are the people who seem to be setting us back. Oh, know? yes. But they just aren't, they just don't have their consciousness turned on yet. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah. right. And so we're all growing. Everybody is, has a soul, and uh, we're just at different levels of what we want for our souls, what we've come here for to right. grow with. And some of us have really, you know, come here with wanting great strides of, uh, you know, of oneness. And others are here just to challenge it. Yeah, or just to have, to yeah, fit. just to have tantrums, sort of. Right. <laughs> tantrums well yeah. or, or just you know lacking respect for human life and not yeah. having empathy i think empathy is, really has so much to do with soul growth and and with our soul identity of because i think the closer the more we can identify with our soul the greater is our self-worth mm -hmm. that's a very nice way of putting that and and the more we can have empathy and compassion for others, the more we understand our oneness, the more we understand. But which comes first? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> knowing oneness gives us yeah. compassion and empathy. Yeah. And, and so uh, that's why it's, you know, we, we really have to have that compassion for souls who don't have it. Mm -hmm and understand the larger picture, even though we can be very annoyed at them because they do things that are unkind, sometimes even appearing evil. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are not ready to love, to experience, you know, lo loving expression. And so uh, they're experiencing ego expression. Right. And, uh, and it's very frustrating for so many of us who feel like we've come here to experience love and we're experiencing ego. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then our, I guess our lesson is we have to, we are invited to learn to love and allow, not allow ego, but allow our own response and keep moving forward just keep moving forward with our own path yeah and and we've come here on purpose for this mm -hmm. you know i mean our egos are saying oh come here just to expand love and oneness and all that that's actually an ego thing <laughs> yeah yeah 
I, I have noticed, I think, I feel hopeful, even regardless of what's in the media and what's happening, but I feel that um, the people that I've been working with are becoming more and more evolved, and I think I'm evolving better. <laughs> Right. I think I'm doing better. And so I think that there is hope. I think we do, um, we move towards levity or light. You know, that's the stronger force than darkness. So we move, we move in the direction of the highest vibration. Right. And we're the, the guides. That's why your book is, is out, Messages from the Divine, that hopefully more and more people will be moved by and... Yeah and feel greater connection mm -hmm. in the universe and with their souls and and be more uh, light bearers for all the dark that seems to be around us now yeah and but the more that we it comes back to this struggle this ego the struggle between the ego and the soul that we need to forgive our egos and really embrace our souls and and do it in ways that your book is really helpful for mm -hmm. you know how to connect in the universe how to, you know you have ch different chapters on on how to create connection mm -hmm. and uh, and they're so helpful because I, I teach intuition and I, mm -hmm. you know, and I know that there's so many ways that we're guided and not just by being intuitive, uh, but by being aware. Yes. And life shows up. Yeah. I think one thing, the book doesn't, um, the book doesn't have a moral stance and the book doesn't focus on, um, instead of saying let's work on your ego and let's get that organized it, it focuses on let's just take in more light and let's just have more connection and the idea is that you know if it's like if you put a a drop of of color, food coloring in a cup a drop of divine food coloring the more you put into the cup eventually it changes color and it's sort of like the more light you're you're taking in or the more connection you're having eventually the ego just kind of gets left in the dust because it's you have so much more fulfilled by this other this other that you're taking in well i think the, then the light can embrace the ego and forgive it and yes. let it you know say thank integrate. you for sharing yeah. <laughs> yes. integrate right exactly right yeah and and so that's really i'm glad you clarified that because um, it's um, it's something that uh, your book is about is is how to enhance our connection with our souls and in in such a positive way and there's so many uh, chapters in your book I mean you do have a lot of great I mean I like that I like when books have a lot of chapters because then we feel okay turn the page let's get a the next expression, the next teaching, yeah. and there's so many of them, and so uh, so there's a lot of of um, lessons about sur uh, not only surrender but uh, allowing what what I've been recently excited about is Wu Wei is the mm -hmm. Chinese term for just uh, you know allowing serendipity and synchronicity to happen and not ex you know get rid of our expectations it's very buddhist it's you know unattachment yes know? and and yet it's to me unattachment is full engagement but without opinion yes <laughs> woo -woo. that's what they say woo hey that's like oh yeah that's yeah good. right that's good right. yeah and, and so the, the whole idea is really, you know, to keep on um, recognizing ourselves in the wholeness that you keep on talking about in the book. Yeah, I think I think maybe the the book has 
that the book uses the term of flow and of being in this state of of flow it's the same as you just said just a different word um the idea that we can just jump into this river of of the divine nudging us to our highest potentiality and when we're not fighting when we're not trying to push the river in a different direction when we're just going with that no expectation or no opinion that's where the universe can help take us further right it's okay. but it's, i guess it's to be awake yes to what impulses are guiding you in the river mm -hmm. not you trying to force it yes and it's also not uh passive you're not just right. um i'll just let the universe do my destiny it's like no you're consciously awake and aware and you're moving in the direction of guidance or you're moving in the, in the direction of connection at all times right and there are two different things at play here one is and you you get into it in the book is the, the buddhist sense of always being an infant always just mm -hmm. really having that innocence of mm -hmm being open to everything and learning in every way possible. And then the other, I believe, it has to do with being true to our, our unique nature, which is different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. so the idea is not to flow as one, emulating each other, but to respect each other and respect ourselves in our uniqueness. Because I, I work with, for instance, with the playing cards, with the destiny cards, and with human design. And those are ways that we're born to be unique. The mechanics of our personality are different. And we think differently. We have a different language going on in our brain all the time. And everyone else, and every, everyone is different. And to recognize that we have a... a um, what, what, what are you, a contract, you call it, a contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or a, a soul's calling or a, a soul's path. And it, it is absolutely unique. You know, if, if, if my path had been determined by society, I would have probably, I don't know, gotten my MBA. That was, that was the track. <laughs> but, you know, and here I am, a, a channel, right? <laughs> and so right. that's my soul contract. And, yeah. I, I just need to do, that's my most important thing to bring. Everyone has their most important thing to bring to the world. And right. I was once matriculated for an MBA at NYU. <laughs> and I remember, this is 1966, and I remember being in, at the school in, the, in, a, in an elevator, dressed in my unique way, surrounded mm -hmm. by everybody in the same gray suits. Mm -hmm. And I looked around and I said, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> Obviously, I shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. yeah. And then I signed up for the Peace Corps. And, you know, so we all had different, you know, roles yeah. to play. Yeah, you were in the state of awareness and then you went into flow in all the, you know, you, you were aware. That's why you were able to jump <laughs> the correct path. Yeah, but, you know, the what ifs, you know, what have, should have, could have. Well, if I would gotten my MBA, you know, it's like, you know, no. it's not me. It, it, you know, it could never be me. <laughs> right. right. And yet there are souls that that's what they're supposed to do. And, you know, it works out oh, for, yeah. for everyone. That's yeah. their design. Yes. So, you know, so, um, so I really, you know, this book is, it's so interesting to, absorb it and you even talk about in early in the book that you can absorb it for the first time you know and but if you looked at it again you're not going to see it the same way yeah i think i'm feeling like the book is what's well, channeled and it was channeled in that uh really the we you know the amrit vela the the we hours of the morning and i feel when i read it now it, it came out just completely whole like the, it just all just came out one lesson after the next and it feels like it is on a lot of different levels like people just starting on the path tend to think it's kind of easy 
And then someone like you who has been on the path very, um, very significantly for many years is like, oh, there's a lot here. And that's what I feel. It's like, whoa, th this is, there's a lot in this that, that I need to mull over. Right. And I think people have to recognize that because you could look at it and say, oh, these are simple things I already know. Right. But that's on the surface. Right. And then all of a sudden there's so many ahas along the way that it's you know it's I, I also find that for me and it, i'm not saying this um me as the writer because it came through so i don't really take uh credit for creating except for the pieces you know that i wrote after uh the little stories but it feels like whenever i read it i feel um very calmed and uplifted that's my sense of it's just um, very clearing just to even yeah, it's very profound in a way yeah. that your soul is reading it. And, your soul is reading it, right, right. right. And gets yeah. happy about it. <laughs> yeah, yes. It feels like it's reading something it's remembered and it's remembering it again. Exactly. That's yeah. wonderful. So, uh, Sarah Wiseman, uh, is there a website? Yeah, it's just uh, sarahwiseman.com. And that's S-A-R-A -A without an yes. H. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and that's great. And um, it's, uh, it's I, I just am so glad that I had a chance to read it. And oh, thank you. Feel, and feel it. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. What I know the level that you brought to it. So I am very appreciative of that. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. And, and um, I'm, so I'm sure that our listeners are I'm going to take advantage of, of this. <laughs> Great. And uh, so this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew. And I want to thank Sarah for being a guest on it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, I'm at uh, Peter at Heart River, H E A R T River.org, or 212 222 7748. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks so much for listening.